we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father of blessings, Father of forgiveness, Almighty Father, may Satan, all the evil things in our family be cast out, the evil roots that are inside of me, that Satan, all be cast out. At this dawn, may we have a new start as a blessed man. May our May we receive the precious blessing where our children do more well. May we overflow with wisdom, knowledge, understanding and prudence. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Let's find it. How should we live a life of victory? If we, if we are victorious daily, then our lives are victorious. So how should we live daily? We have to continuously be joyful. Even though you're told this word, you're not joyful. You're not joyful. You're not joyful. If you have demons inside of you and you say you're joyful, that, that's a problem too. So we have to live with joy. That is when the Lord is with you. Let's read together. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Amen. So because we can't make this one verse mine, that's why you're sitting here like this. This is not some self-discipline training. If you go to where you have to self-discipline, where you have to train yourself, if you fall asleep, then you get hit by a stick. You know, there are people here who've never been to places like that. That's why you don't know how to receive this for free. People who have experienced that, they come here and they're like, how can this be? What, you say that you fall asleep because you're tired at dawn? If you have to wash in ice water and run around the yard you know how can you fall asleep it's because you don't do those things that you fall asleep but if you haven't tried those things then you don't know how good it is to receive something for free if you have done that training then you realize wow you can receive this for free so at this dawn let's find joy that's god's commandment to rejoice let's greet the person next to us let's rejoice Let's rejoice. Let's rejoice. What is it to rejoice? It is medicine. It is to go to heaven. Romans chapter 15 verse 13. It is faith. So you eat medicine. You go to heaven. You receive health. You go to heaven. And then you pass it down to a thousand generations. That is a Christian life. So that's why we've come at this dawn to receive that help, to receive those blessings. How good is this news? But because it's not mine, that's why it just ends as, as good news and it just ends as us trying to catch a cloud. If you go up a, up a mountain and catch a cloud, even if you hold onto it so tightly and put it inside a bag, there's nothing there. So this joy has to become mine. When does this happen? In the Lord. So if you don't know the Lord, nothing works out. So once you can rejoice, that's someone who can... So when you're in the Lord, that's when you can give up all your worries. So let's, it says here, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. If you can't find joy and you just sit there like that, God knows this so well. So because, even though he says rejoice, it doesn't work. That's why he says, again, I will say, rejoice. How much don't we rejoice that he says this? So here, this is the study of psychology. 
So I'm someone who refuses to do good things. You think that you're so enthusiastic or diligent to do good things, but you don't. And that's why God says, again, I will say rejoice. So let's greet the person next to us. Let's say, again, I will say rejoice. How how can God know our hearts so well? We so refuse to rejoice. If you meditate on the word, it's so thankful that you have tears. It is so thankful. He doesn't just say rejoice. He says, again, I will say rejoice. You know, when you're so regretful, you say to your children, please, please receive blessings. And then you say, please. So that's why God's saying here, again, I will say, rejoice. If Almighty God has to say it twice, how much am I disobedient? You know, he says it straight away. He says it twice straight away. So that's how much we don't find joy. Who is that? It's me. So am I joyful? When God sees us, we're not. So that's why he says again, I say rejoice. So why is it that we're not joyful? Because of greed. Because we're holding on to something. And that's why we let go of rejoicing. We let go of holding on to the Lord. And instead, we worry and we're anxious. So let's read verse 5. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. So that's when you can go inside of the Lord and be joyful. So this gentleness is to forgive. But these fake Christians, they refuse to forgive. So you have a crooked Christian. They make denominations. They make enemies. They they don't know how to become one. So worldly people say, even over, you know, some alcohol, we become one. Even though demons, they, they make fun of us. Christians, they refuse to forgive. So God says, you don't do well because you don't forgive. He teaches us. So the reason why you can't be joyful is because you can't forgive. So you look at these Christians who their in-laws, their in-laws are enemies, their children, they're all in opposition, their spouses are enemies. So at our church we don't have those fakes coming for counselling, but, but these people who come and say, Oh, it's that person that doesn't believe. But the spouses are one. You know, so there are stupid people who come and ask for counseling like that. But there are stupid pastors who also say, yes, yes, you have good faith, but it's that person that's an unbeliever. No, you're the same. You know, that's like cutting your body in half and saying, let's get rid of that half. You can't live. If you realize this word, you know, that's not even worthy for counseling. As long as I do well, it, it will happen. So why is it that we can't find joy? Because we don't forgive others. Straight away it tells us, and then it tells us again. Verse 6, be anxious for nothing. But we worry and we're anxious and we're fearful. We worry about money. We worry about our children. We worry about ourselves. We worry about our family. All we do is ha have these burdens. So if you do that, you can't be joyful. You look at someone who can't smile. You ask them what they can't forgive. There's something on, they're holding on to that they can't forgive. And yet they're deceived by themselves, deceived by their demons. And they say, no, no, I've forgiven everything. Oh, yeah, yes, I do have a little bit of sadness. 
So that is not forgiving. So why is it you can't find joy? Because you haven't forgiven. So we have to forgive. Let's greet the person next to us. I, f I forgive. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. So those not inside of Christ, Titus chapter 1 verse 15. If your heart is crooked, you say, what have I d done wrong that I have to that I have to ask for forgiveness. We all have something. Even demons say that there's some, you know, there's some connection in, in people meeting. There's some, um, you know, there's something in your ancestors that you meet up with that person. So if someone's not saying amen, if someone's falling asleep, and it's for us to repent because it is connected to us. So if we realize and we repent that it's me that lives, why is it that I can't find joy? Because I don't forgive. Because I hold on to worries and anxiety and I don't give it up to God. That's what the word's saying. So in verse 4, let's read verse 4, 5, 6, 7 together. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say rejoice. Let your gentle spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. So at the end it says, in Christ Jesus, your hearts and your minds will be guarded. So whoever lives according to their own hearts, that's Satan. They don't have joy. It's God who has to guard over our hearts. So the easiest thing that we can't do is we don't forgive others. We refuse to forgive others. Why is it that there are denominations? Why do they make these factions? Is it because they have a good relationship? Why is it that there's two? When one becomes two, it's because you've argued and fought. So those who make denominations, he will not give the Holy Spirit. Jude chapter 1 by verse 19. So if he doesn't give you the Holy Spirit, can your demons depart? Let's find Jude chapter 1 verse 19. If you don't receive the Holy Spirit, your demons do not depart. So if your demons haven't depart, departed, just because you're a pastor or an elder, does that mean you go to heaven? If that was true, then we'd all, we'd all buy, buy a title of being a pastor or an elder and then, you know, try and get into heaven like that. No, that's not the way. You have to become one. So then firstly, my heart shouldn't be double-minded. If I have a double mind, then I can't go to heaven. So what is a double mind? James chapter 1, verse 6 to 8, it's when you have demons that you have a double heart. So if you're thinking, should I do this or that, it's because you have demons. If the Holy Trinity, the Lord, comes, then you have one heart. If you do four-step repentance by Christ, you have one heart, and that is joy. Two hearts, you worry and you're anxious. So starting from me, I have to do well. If I do well, then look at my spouse relationship. If my spouse relationship isn't doing well and I'm not doing well, then I can't do well to my neighbor. So you have to start by having your spouse do well. Oh, but that person doesn't believe. doesn't matter as long as I as, as I am doing well and, and I have to see them in a loving way. If you say, oh, I hate them just a little bit, whether you divide it a little bit, you know, two grains of rice, are they st stuck together or not? But it's when you pour water and you boil it, then they become one. If you grab a grain of rice, nothing sticks to it. 
even after one month. But once you pour that water in and boil it, within one hour, they're all stuck together. You shake it and they, they won't um, they won't fall apart. So in Christ we have to become new. As long as I do well, then the Father, He, he makes the other do well. So those people who are first generational believers, it's difficult because the ancestors' sins have taken root. No matter what you do, it feels like there's no change. A filthy house, you clean it the whole day and it doesn't seem to have changed. Whereas a clean house, even if you don't... So even if it's difficult for me, then my descendants will do more well. Our future will do more well. Let's all receive this. It will work. It will work. At the beginning, it seems like it's not working. So to live joyfully, I have to rep I have to forgive others and I have to entrust my worries and anxieties. That is being inside of Christ Jesus. That's being inside of the Lord. So this is why I can't find joy. And then you say, oh, it's because, you know, I have so many children, that's why I have so many problems. It's not because of the branches that the tree shakes. It's because of the wind. Except people don't know that and they say it's because there's too many branches. That's why the tree shakes. No, it's because there's wind. If there's no wind, no matter how many branches, it won't shake. So inside of the Lord, everything is prosperous. No matter what the weather is outside, if you come inside the house, then you won't, you won't freeze, you won't boil. So everything is in the Lord. So why does it say the Lord, not God? Because our lives, which are like pr pilgrims, we travelers, we walk with the Lord and we return to the Lord for judgment. Romans chapter 11, verse 36. And we've come from the Lord. We haven't come from our ancestors. We've come from the Lord. So, we have to go inside of the Lord. We have to always be in the Lord. If you go in and then come back out, then you don't have joy. That's why it says to always be joyful inside of the Lord. But because we don't do this, that's why we have problems. Oh, why, is, why do I have this headache? Because I'm outside of the Lord. If you do first repentance and then don't do it, and you do it and then you don't do it. Because you're not always inside of the Lord, that's why you're not always joyful. So let's read Jude chapter 1 verse 19. These are the ones who cause divisions, worldly minded, devoid of the Spirit. Amen. So those who make denominations, those who are of the flesh, they always slander others. They're envious, jealous. Everywhere they go, they argue. And they make um, divisions. They make denominations. That person cannot have the Holy Spirit. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit, what's inside of you? Demons. Because there's no such thing as an empty house. Matthew chapter 12, verse 45. So there's no such thing as an empty house. So if you don't have the Holy Spirit and you make denominations, you're demons. That's what God has said. Why would I say that? It's what God has recorded. So why is it that you don't have joy? Because you're not inside of the Lord. If you're not inside of the Lord, then you're not new. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. That's why you don't have joy. And you just sit there like that. Please, I say again... Let's be joyful in the Lord. If we go inside of the Lord, God gives us joy. With this blessing, let's be victorious. Whatever problem, let's go inside of the Lord. If you have a problem, it's because you're outside of the Lord. 
So whatever problem, if you're not joyful, if you if you have a problem, you're outside of the Lord. If you're inside of the Lord, then you have joy. That's God's promise. So it, let's receive the blessing of being a witness. If you say, what should I do about this problem? Go inside of the Lord. So if you go inside of the Lord, you forgive. But these fake denominations do not forgive. So we have to be able to even love our enemies. That's how much we should forgive. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 to 45. But these people who slander and make enemies, these are the fake denominations. And yet they say they're going to heaven. Even though they deny the, the word and they lie, how can you go to heaven then? So the first thing is to go inside of the Lord. So why can't you go inside of the Lord? Because you don't forgive others. These fake Christians, because they have demons, they don't know how to forgive. If you're of the flesh, you're always arguing. So instead of forgiving, you're arguing. It's those people who go to hell. And yet we don't know this. And that's why you don't have joy, whether you're a pastor or, you know, you have these ash, these grey faces. demons, the demons inside of me, let's please find joy. They have to depart. Those demons have to depart. Why won't they depart? Because we don't forgive others. Why is it that your problems aren't being solved? Because you don't forgive others. So God tells us to forgive. If you want to solve this problem, you have to forgive others. If you want to get rid of worries and anxieties, you have to forgive others and entrust to God. That's when your problems change to answers. So that's why your health receives solutions. That's why if you hate others, it's you that gets the disease. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 10. So why do we do this? Because we don't forgive others. Those people whose diseases aren't healed, they're holding on to something. You say that you're not holding on to it. Those people who are deceived, it's because they've received their ancestors' unforgiveness. But that person, what they keep seeing, if your ancestors embezzled others, or you were embezzled and you can't forgive others, then you keep receiving things where you're embezzled. Why do I keep receiving this? Or if you're, you and your ancestors have unforgiveness regarding fornication, that's why you keep getting these events and you keep hearing things about fornication and you keep seeing these things about fornication. So that's why you have to realize your ancestors have done, have tied up something. So as long as you cut that off, by four-step repentance, if we go inside the Lord, we cut this off. Inside of the Lord, everything will do well. With four-step repentance, everything will do well. So whatever problem, let's solve it. If we go inside of the Lord, the Lord, Matthew chapter 16, verse 16, is Christ. So even our enemies we have to forgive. You say, oh, I like everything about that person, but I can't forgive that. That's your ancestors' sins and your sins. Oh, with my spouse relationship, it's that gambling I can't forgive. That's because your ancestors have tied up so much gambling. Some people say, oh, there's one thing I can't stand, which is the fishing. Oh, I can't stand that person hiking up the mountain. That's because there's something tied up with your ancestors. So I have to repent of that and get rid of it. That's when your problems are all solved. If you let those things remain, you can't go inside of the Lord. And you keep getting things where you can't be joyful. People who aren't doing well, that's what's happening. At this dawn, let's solve all this. Let's become someone who can forgive and love our enemies. That means everything will work out. 
Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 and 45. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Amen. So inside of the Lord, we have to always be inside of the Lord. That's when it gives us joy. So if you can't do this, it's because you can't forgive others. You're holding on to enemies. Oh, ask the neighbors. Ask what kind of person I am. You know, I'm someone who forgives everyone. No, there is something there. Well, yes, there is one thing that I can't stand. Oh, I can't stand people who gamble. That's what's come down from your ancestors to you. So, you know, you like everything about that person because so there's one thing you can't stand. You know who the tigers, they hate cats the most. Why? Because they resemble them. So with spouses, you hate what is you. If there's something not right about you, you forgive yourself easily, but anything that resembles you, you can't stand it. So if you can't stand your children, it's because they're exactly like you. Oh, my father hates me. That's because your father is the same as you. Does that mean your mother loves you? No. How can enemies love? Especially like your, she'll say, oh, you're just like your dad. So God's saying, you haven't loved your enemy. You haven't forgiven. You're not inside of the Lord. Because you keep going in and out of the Lord, that's why you're joyful and then you're not joyful. We have to always be in the Lord. That means you'll always be joyful. He will do it. He will do it. So if your problems aren't being solved, it's because you're not in the Lord. Today, let's go in the Lord. Let's say to the person next to us, let's live in the Lord. Let's live in the Lord. But we don't want to always be joyful in the Lord. Let's stay in the Lord. Let's always stay in the Lord. That is joy. That is the joy that God gives. Fire our problems. Let's go in the Lord and only receive joy. So we have to forgive and rejoice. Let's say to the person next to us, I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I forgive you. So in all things we have to forgive. But when you go home and you go, oh, I can't stand you. No, we have to forgive. You can't stand someone. If you can't stand someone, that can't be. You know, you go, oh, that daughter-in-law, she ruined our family. No, we have to forgive all. The elderly elderesses, you say amen, but have you truly forgiven? It seems like you've forgiven, but you go back. So instead of holding like this, you hold like that. Today, let's let it all go. You know, the people who are who are elderly, you know, you, as you cleanse your heart, you're still holding on. So let's forgive all. Let's all pray. Only four-step repentance is going inside of the Lord. If you're always inside the Lord, you're joyful. Why is it that you have problems? So that you forgive, so that you throw it away and you go inside the Lord. Father, you've told us to always be in the Lord. But we go outside of the Lord. We don't know how to go inside of the Lord. And then once we're in, we go back out. Help us to awaken from this simpleness. Why do we do this? Because we don't forgive. Those people who can't forgive and who live with demons. There are so many people like this. That's not others. Help us to realize that's me. From today, let's be victorious. Every time we have problems, let's go inside of the Lord. And let's do four-step repentance for our problems and go inside of the Lord. 
May we all have joy and eat medicine. May our problems be changed to answers. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. <laughs>